You know, I love going to the beach. I don't know, maybe you do too. I love it. I love the, the sounds. I love the breeze, the picnics, the sun. But of all of it, I love the sound the most. There's a beauty to that sound. The waves crashing up on the shore, there's a beauty to it. And unless those waves get too large, it's a beautiful place to be. And same sound, different feeling when those waves get a little too large. And depending on your position, those waves are either comfortable and beautiful to watch or they're damaging, depending on your position. When I'm on looking from a shore or a pier, it's beautiful. When I'm in the water, the waves are too large it's not beautiful anymore, it's scary, it's possibly painful. Like when KK and I got a little too far out. We were down at Padre Island. We got a little too far out there. We wanted to see how far we could go. And you know, when you go to the Texas Gulf Coast, you can walk out there, it feels like a mile, and you're still three feet deep in water. And we finally got out there to where I was almost up to my neck holding KK and the waves started to get too big. I was thinking about that during this message when I felt like God wanted me to share an important word with you regarding these waves. Our position is, is very, very important. Our position emotionally and our position mentally can change day to day. You and I need a constant. We need a peer. We need a safe place. We need a stability. We need a steadiness. And we've been tossed around a little bit lately, haven't we? Kelly and I were on a Zoom call the other day and we were ta talking to this person we haven't seen in about six weeks and we mentioned that it was six weeks and they said, you mean it's only been six weeks? It feels like it's been three months. We've been tossed around a lot lately. You know, last Thursday, a couple of Thursdays ago, we found out that kids wouldn't be returning to the classroom. And before then it was one executive order after another after another and we started to lose track on who the executives were and who were making all these orders. And the waves just kept coming and, and maybe you're watching these waves and maybe you're getting hit by them and maybe you're catching your breath just in time to get hit again. And there's actually a story in scripture that we can learn from here. So allow me to introduce you to the one that says, hush, be still. Mark 4, chapter, Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. On that day when evening came, he said to them, let us go over to the other side, he being Jesus. Leaving the crowd, they took him along in the boat just as he was, and the other boats were with him, and there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was filling up with water. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him and said, teacher, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, hush, be still. And the wind died down and became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now there's a tumultuous situation right there, huh? Waves, fear, both crashing down toward them. Even in their fear, they knew where to go and where to drop Jesus into the situation. Now, this is week one of a series called Name Dropper, where we are dropping the names of God into our situations. And look at these guys. They were being hit and smashed and torn by the waves, boats about to come apart, and they knew exactly where to go and what name to call hush, be still, was thereafter. God wants to provide calm to your tumultuous sea. Now, I did not say that God's gonna end all this COVID nonsense tomorrow. We all wish that he would. I didn't say that, but what I did say was God will bring calm to your emotional sea. God will bring calm to your mental sea. God will bring calm to your soul. And we ask God sometimes, God, do you not care? Come on, don't you see what's going on? God, don't you see? God, don't you care? Come on, get up off the cushion. God, what are you doing? And then he gets up and he says, hush, be still. He doesn't say hush to us. He says, hush to the tumult. 
in our hearts and in our minds and in our situations. So I'm gonna bring you a kingdom paradigm right now. Everybody say that with me. Say kingdom paradigm. Here's the kingdom paradigm. Where Jesus is, there is heaven. Where he is, there is heaven. Who then is this, is what they said. And in order to drop someone's name into a situation, in order to drop someone's name, you need to know what they're truly capable of, don't you? You need to know who they know and who they run with. You need to know who they are. And thus, this series was created in prayer in a quiet time I was having with God. This series came out of God calling me to remind him of who he is and to remind myself of who God is and to bring God into a situation. And I wanted to, I want to teach you and equip you with the powerful truths and some of the most beautiful sides and functions of God. When you bring God into a situation, you are literally inserting the character of God, the power of God, the person of God into the chaos. And you're watching him bring stability to it. There are dozens of names that describe God in scripture. Each name shows a side of God that we desperately need in our lives. And when you drop a name into a situation, things change. Maybe not around you, but assuredly in you. Who you know gains you access. Think of, think of a bouncer, right? If you walk up and they're not gain, giving you access to this club. Now, I know none of y'all ever went to clubs because you're all very holy. But imagine with me if you're walking up and there's a bouncer and he's not letting you in. He's like, no, you're not getting in. You go, but I know so-and-so. And they're like, oh, excuse me, my apologies. And they move that red rope and they let you in. There's a, the, Knowing certain names gains you access. Well, I know John Doe. Well, then enter. Here's what I know. There's authority behind a name. There's favor behind a name. There's expectation behind a name. There's protection behind a name. There's deliverance behind a name. There's provision behind a name. Now, may I say this, there is authority behind the name. There is favor, expectation, protection, deliverance, and provision behind the name, the name of Jesus Christ. And my prayer for you, my hope for you is that you begin to walk with stability and walk with steadiness, not because of what you can do, but because of who he is. So allow me to introduce you to one of the most beautiful sides, most powerful sides of our Savior, most powerful side, one of the most powerful sides of our God. See, King David knew this side of God very well. We're going to highlight him here for a second. Talk about a tumultuous life. I mean, King David, that dude was a player. I mean, this guy, this guy had a crazy life. And even though King David's life was embattled by war and scandal and crime, he was able to find something that we all need. And that was stability. And that stability enabled progress. And he became one of Israel's greatest kings. And I want to I want to introduce you to two different names of God that we're going to highlight today. One of them is Jehovah Mephalti. I know that sounds like a crazy word, but Jehovah Mephalti, that is the Lord, my deliverer. The Lord, my deliverer. Now, everybody say that with me just to kind of get your Hebrew rolling, all right? Say Jehovah Mephalti, the Lord, my deliverer. See, it says in Psalm 18 too, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. So it's the Lord Jehovah is my rock, my fortress, and my Mephalti, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He's my shield and my salvation, my stronghold. What a beautiful word. What a beautiful name of God. He's your deliverer. The next one I want to teach you today is Elohim Mechase Lanu. That one's a little harder for y'all to say with me. Say it with me. Elohim Mechase Lanu. That means God, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, says Psalm 62, 8. You people pour out your hearts to him for God, Elohim, is our refuge. He is our refuge. See, here's what I want us to learn today. Stability comes from closeness. Stability comes from closeness to him. Psalm 16 says, we are at his right 
hand and that God is at, our, that Jesus is he's right there. He's at our right hand. It says, I will bless the Lord who counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also dwell securely. Stability. And the Passion Translation says it this way. Because you are close to me and always available, my confidence will never be shaken. For I experience your wraparound presence every moment. Stability. Stability. No matter what kind of virus comes our way, stability. No matter what the government does or doesn't do, stability. No matter if we're having church online or at the Live Oak Cinema, stability. No matter if the building contracts go through or not, stability. God is calling us to be obedient and close to him, and that brings stability and confidence. Psalm 73 says, nevertheless, I am continually with you. You take hold of my right hand. Guys, I never, under, I never saw how many times, it's like, it, it's like it jumped off the page at me. It's like it jumped off the page at me, and then it said it, the words right hand just jumped right off the page toward me. It said, who am I in heaven but you? I desire nothing but my flesh and my heart may fail. See, he's at our right hand. God, who am I? Who have I in heaven but you? You're right here with me. King David knew the source. See, King David is saying all of this, and King David knows the source of refuge and deliverance, and he knows the need to be close to God and close to God alone. The word refuge we see again in Psalm 73, 28, but as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord my refuge. A refuge is a place of safety, but it's also a place of rearmament. It's a place where you go and get equipped and re-equipped and refilled and refilled. A refuge is an important place. We must go to God. That sounds so strong and so powerful, right? You're like, yeah, let's go. God's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my deliverer. You know you feel good right now hearing this, but what about when we aren't feeling like God is our refuge or we know he is, but we're not feeling it? Look at the swinging differences in how chapter 73 of Psalms begins, chapter 74 begins, and how chapter 75 begins. Same person writing all three chapters, King David, three different letters. Look how different they are. Chapter 73 says, surely God is good to Israel. And all the church said, amen. Everyone's like, yeah, praise the Lord. Tambourines, people dancing, everyone's excited. And then chapter 74 says, oh God, why hast thou rejected us forever? Why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? I haven't. I just usually say, God, why does this suck so much? Uh, that, that's exactly what David is saying. God, what is going on? What is going on? Then chapter 75, the first verse, he says, we give thanks to thee, O God. We give thanks for thy name is near. Men declare your wondrous works. So what is going on with King David? What's going on with this guy? Here's what I know. You can have these swinging moments. God knows you're gonna have them. God knows you're gonna be upset. God knows these things are coming, but here's also what God knows. He knows that if you come to him and you make him your stay and you make him your refuge, that he will always, he will always give you goodness and guidance. He will always give you goodness and guidance, whether you're in a chapter 73 or 75 kind of day or you're in a chapter 74 kind of day right now. Each chapter shows us how to find stability in a tumultuous time. Look back at Psalm 73, 23. Here's the difference. The word, nevertheless. Nevertheless. It's, this is when King David was saying in chapter 74, all these things are going wrong. And then he goes, boom, but. Boom, nevertheless. Everything starts to shift. And he begins to remind himself of who God is to him. He begins to remind God of who he is. And he begins to drop the names of God into a situation and bring the character of God into a situation, bring the power of God into a situation. 
when we drop the names of God into our specific life situations, we're, gonna, we're having a nevertheless mindset. A nevertheless mindset of, I know this is going on, but boom, nevertheless, you are this God. You are powerful God. You are strong God. You're my refuge. Chapter 74 gives us the rubric on how to live this. Remember, David says at chapter 74, the beginning of chapter 74, he says, God, why hast thou rejected us forever and let your sheep go up and smoke or something like that? Why hast thou rejected us forever? Why do I feel like I'm smoking? Why do I feel like what's going on? The message translation says it this way. You walked off, God, and you left us. We feel like you never looked back. God, how could you do that? Have you ever felt like that? Look, guys, King David prayed it. Landon, that's not a prayer. Yes, it is. It's talking to God. It's a very real prayer. God, why? why? What happened? He goes on to say in verse six and seven, my enemies smashed with hatchets and hammers and they burned the sanctuary to the ground. Man, have you ever had a hatchet hammer burning kind of day? I have. And then he says in verse nine, there is no prophet any longer. That means there's no one, no one can hear from God. I can't hear from God anymore. There's no prophet any longer. No, there is, there's no one, there's no one else among us who knows how long this will go on. King David said that. There's no one among us who knows how long this will go on. I'm asking myself that right now. How long is this gonna go on? For a guy who likes to plan years ahead, to only be able to plan a few days in advance. It's hard, it's hard. How long is this gonna go on? Maybe you're feeling that too. Then he says in verse 11, why dost thou withdraw thy hand? Why is there right hand being taken from me? <gasps> There's the right hand again. Let me bring this to your attention. I'm, I, I feel like this is important for somebody right now and I'm getting goosebumps preaching it, and you're not even gonna see this for weeks. Let me share with you why this is so powerful. Why dost thou withdraw thy right hand, thy hand, even thy right hand? There's the hand again. See, he says, God, you're at my right hand, I feel close to you. And then in this moment, verse 11, he declares to God, God, why do I feel so alone? Why do I feel like you're not, there, and then comes verse 12. Then comes verse 12. After he's made his pain known, boom, then comes verse 12. Yet God is my king from old. What does that mean? I know my God, I've seen him do this before. Because then he says, I know God is my king from old who works deeds of deliverance. I know my God, I've seen him do it. And then he says, thou didst over and over and over. Thou didst this, thou didst that. That means you did this, God, not I did. Remember, it's Yahweh, not your way. And so this is, I, God, you did this. When, when I thought I was gonna lose my job, and I did, you had a promotion for me somewhere else. You did that, God. God, when I thought I was sick and I was going under, you did this, you brought healing to me. God, you did this, you did this, you did this. All the way from verse 18 to 23, he, or before verse 18, he's reminding himself from verse 12 to 18 and reminding God and himself of who God is. So verse one through 11, he's making his pain known. Verse 12 to 18, he's name dropping. He's bringing the name of God into the situation. And then verse 18 to 23, he makes requests to God. And as we get ready to end today, I wanna tell you, here's how it plays out practically for us. The first thing you need to do, make your pain known to God. It is not good to just dismiss that nothing is going on. Make the pain known. Make it known to God. Number two, name drop. Boom, name drop it. Name drop it. We just talked today about God is your deliverance and God is your refuge. Bring those names. Remind yourself of who God is. And number three, make your requests known to God. Make your request known to God. I want you to follow this plan and I want you to watch God work. Follow this plan, watch God change everything. And just as King David reminded himself that God is Jehovah Mephalti, the deliverer, that God is Elohim Lanu, that God is my refuge, that God is with me, we should do that too. 
I'm not asking you to learn Hebrew. I'm asking you to go to God. I'm asking you to go there. We have to. We get to. It's a beautiful thing that God has just opened his arms wide and allows us to come to him. So bring your cares to him. Bring your pain to him. God is our refuge and God will deliver. Psalm 18, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. In my, and I cried to God for help. He heard my voice and my voice came to his ears. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my weakness and calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth into a broad place. He rescued me because he delights in me. And then you can say this, the Lord lives, blessed be the rock and the God of my salvation. He is El Rai, the God who sees me. And he sees you today. He sees you today. He wants you and he wants to know you. He's holding on to you. And do you know how I know that? Because he is Emmanuel, God with us. He's here with you right now. He's on this video. He's at your home. He's in your car. He's with you. He sees you and he wants to deliver you and be a refuge for you. God, for every person who's been watching this video, I pray that they would feel the peace of God, that they would be able to come to God right now and lay these things down, make their pain known, and that they would be able to say, the Lord is my refuge. When it looks like all oh, hell is going on around them, they're still able to say, God is my stay. The Lord is my refuge. And God, may they be able to come to you, especially those right now that don't know you. And those of you watching that don't know you, I want you to look, at, look right into the camera at me. God sees you and he wants to save you. He loves you. He wants to deliver you. So we're gonna pray this prayer. And when you pray this after me, we're gonna believe because the, the Bible tells us that you've been born again, that you are now saved and you're now a Christian. Watch God change your life for the better. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I need your grace. Forgive me of my sin and accept me into your family. I receive your grace and mercy fully. Your word also tells me that I am a brand new creation and that I will never be the same. Never, never, never in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, before we end, let me say this to you. I'm proud of you. Congratulations, that is so amazing. I want everybody to get out your phone and I want you to text the word name dropper, all one word, name dropper to 210-899-7779 and that's going to send you a PDF full list of the names of God. We've got that prepared for you, it'll send you a link, you can click it and you can see all of the beautiful sides and names of God that you can drop into your situation. I hope it blesses you and helps you. God bless you. I'll see you next Sunday.